out of the session. So my name is Kevin Georges. I'm ori originally from Italy, been studied in, uh, uh, in Bologna, in California, in, uh, in Switzerland, and seen many other type of learning and how that works. And by starting collaborating with some professors or students, we realized there was some problem of communication. So in your institutions, most likely it's like it worked in, in, our, in my institutions. I got until the end of the course and only then I was asked for feedback. And this is the beginning of the story that I'm going to share with you uh, today. Perfect, so I see many learning designers and many others. So we can start and today we will see how we can use feedback to actually improve courses and the research that we made from a pedagogical and psychological perspective on this topic. So uh, share the screen. Perfect. So uh, the idea of the platform is to actually manage the course journey. So the learning experience of, of the students through behavioral science and real time feedback. And we all start here. Feedback is broken. Why do we so do so? Because it's done at the end. So what is done is done. And the idea of feedback is to improve, but how can the students feel motivated to answer? Low response rates, inaccurate inputs, and many more aspects that we see in, uh, uh, in classes. So why is it broken? Very often we focus on the key performance indicator. Are they learning what is the grades, but not often on the key behavioral indicators such as the engagement, the motivation, the relationship between the class and the trainer. And these are some of the factors. It takes a long time to process the feedback. So we wait until the end and maybe three to six months later, the trainer receives it. Students perceive it as long and it's boring. Of course, it's done one time. We want to get as much as possible and it's generally long. It's done one time. So depending on the students feel that day, they can, depend on their moods, did they wake up on the wrong side of the bed is it rainy? It is sunny. That influences the way people are going to answer. And all the aspects that we saw before, without mentioning how much institution actually spend in time and money in managing this feedback. So what, what are the trainees and the trainers, so the people learning and teaching actually say? It's not effective. No feedback is received back. That is an interesting one because students give feedback, but then nothing changed I feel demotivated or frustrated. And that's, of course, happened at the end of the course. I give feedback and I'm leaving. Then, OK, what's happening to that? Too long, useless, some strong words are given there. So, and what are the implications? Lower engagement. So if the information is not timely, then we get until the end with the issues, nothing that we can actually improve. It takes time for every course to manage this feedback and many people involved. There are several platforms to do so from what data you take to import it, to visualize it, to share it. And finally, you have uncertainty. How can you make decisions if you're not sure that the input you're receiving is accurate because of the mood, because of the uh, motivation of students answering or not? And that's where we enter uh, into play. So our mission and, and goal is to turn feedback into smart decisions. And what we mean by that is gathering the feedback and providing actionable insights on what could be improved. So the objective of this session is to understand what are the pillars of engagement. So what influence uh, students learn and pillars that the trainer can use to improve their performance. How can we assess such pillars? How often should feedback be collected? Who should receive this feedback? And what action should be taken based on uh, this feedback? So we started this framework of engagement. So we took from a literacy perspective, what motivates students to learn, and we collected these 11 pillars. So you might know, I'm pretty sure you know, Mihaly of the concept of the flow state. So between the challenges of the, of the course and the skills of the students, where are they located? Are the challenges 
harder than the skills, so they might be stressed, or is the opposite, so the skills are higher, and so they might be bored. Or aspect as trust between the professor and the students. If the subject is interested, if the goals are clear, so why am I in the subjects? Too often as a student, but also as a TI, I enter the course and we just start right away without making the student understand why is the subject important from a personal or professional perspective. And our aspect is, are they exposed to new concepts? Is there a progress in this learning or are people just too confused? They are not getting any new inputs. Do they have control? Are they interrelating this information? And what's the driver to, to, uh, to learn? Do they study for themselves or for a grade? So internal or external motivation. Then self-confidence within themselves. Am I confident enough in succeeding this course? So within and between people. So the social interactions. All of this is what define the student's engagement within the course. Of course, we have other factors such as the external ones family, financials, uh, location of the school, uh, environment. We are focused on the one that the professor and the student can act on in the course along the way. And then, of course, let's say, yes, nice. You tell me what to measure, but how? Well, either you figure out or you can uh, see the way we do it. So at first we thought, how can we ask students like from one to 10, is it clear the goal of the subject? Or do you agree that it's uh, clear the goal of the subject? So the leaker skill, the rating skills. However, when we measure engagement and motivation, these factors are, these ratings are weak. Why? How can a student relate to a number? So what does a number mean to me? And what are two numbers means to me and to you can have different meanings. So how much are you learning out of 10, seven? My seven and your seven have different meanings. This is why we developed the so-called psychological hypothetical projective question, which is a way to collect in a structure and fast way feedback from the student. Hypothetical, because every statement, every question has four statements. Projective, because the students can project their situation in the sentence. And of course, there is the option to change. We can predict all cases, but this is the first way for the student to reflect. Oh, I, I haven't realized maybe I have an issue. The platform helped me to deep dive into what I can actually improve to make my experience better. And assessing is not enough if there is not an output. So we measure engagement with timely insights. So the insights are, for example, the pillars that we saw before, the flow state, trust the difficulties and the skills and the trust. By the way, this is provided to everyone. Next, how often? So we learned what to measure, how to measure it. Now, when should we do it? So the best is timely insight, continuous feedback. So you have a course, you provide uh, feedback after the course on the applications like you unlock it or you schedule it automatically. And everyone in 80 seconds will see the, uh, the dashboard. You can make changes along the way and answer the questions. Now, of course, in your mind, it might be, okay, but I have courses two, three times per week. Well, that's up to you. Ideally, it's once per week, once every other week. But the platform is made to be um, adaptable to your needs. Do you want to just do it once every other week, once every three, every month? Well, that's up to you. So whenever you say, I feel I need to understand how the class is doing and feeling, you click unlock and you have it. So aspect of continuous feedback is important to act proactively. Next is who should receive this information. So it's not just the administration as it is now and followed by the trainer, but should be everyone in real time. And the new part is also the students get their own dashboards. As we saw before, those charts on the right also share with the students. So the students see themselves and the average of the class. And some question might arise, for example, doesn't it create bias? Well, we studied that. For example, trust, we don't share where is the average because that's very personal. 
or uh, the feedback, it's only personal. So students receive it, trainers receive it, and the administration receive it as well, with different visualization, of course. What to measure, how to measure it, when to measure it, who received it, so what? What do we do with it? So the first step to an improvement is the awareness. So being aware of what is the current situation. The way we do so is three way. There is a visualization. As you can see here is the visualization of the trust. So there is an 81% of trust. Okay, whatever it means, there is a question mark that will explain you. The second is the number, 81. And the third is the interpretation. So we provide an automatic pedagogical interpretation from a professor perspective and from a student perspective of what that results mean. So it becomes easier to read, okay, 81% mean there is a good relationship between you and the professor, and this can lead to open discussion and a facilitated learning process. So for every chart, every pillar, there will be an interpretation as well as a didactical pedagogical section where you can learn more of what are the different pillars. Then what we do is we provide the so-called dashboard reading with our pedagogists in case the institution don't have it, or we can integrate this with institution departments. Sometimes there are, like we see in the call, we have learning designers who might be very interested in getting this information to redesign courses or understand, oh, we have a new course. How is this course going? How do we um, improve it? So just to give a bit of a story, I'm finishing my master also in St. Gallen and a professor sent us on one form, a pre-assessment, on another form, the big five framework. So introverted, extroverted. Why? Because it's a new course and he asked for continuous feedback. That is exactly what we are providing here. Finally, why we do all of this for a better learning experience. And this is the outcome that we did from our scientific research. It's actually uh, been a paper accepted in the uh, ESC uh, programs, the European Conference on Innovation and Entrepreneurship in the field of education. And our participants, so it was a pool of uh, 10 professors through 20 different interviews, saying the tool was useful. There was continuous feedback and that was valuable. The tool was reliable. So what you, the chart that you see, do they reflect the real situation in the course? They said it is quite reliable. And continuous feedback tool is a way to measure actually satisfaction and improve it. So that's, it was a way to improve the satisfaction along the way. And what are our users saying? It's a great example of technology innovation. I unlocked the survey to give them an opportunity. You leave the feedback for me and it's teamwork through which we grow together. Immediacy is the added value and is definitely a new way of communication and so on and so on. So our solution focuses on three pillars, automating this process, managing the information and providing real time analytics. So I would like to move now into kind of a discussion uh, mode. So let me stop sharing first. All right. Um, so if you have any questions that you would like to add uh, in, uh, in the chat, um, any sort of discussion, I see now we have 28 participants plus myself and Tina. Um, and in the meantime, I can share uh, my LinkedIn and and the website uh, of what we're doing. Of course, if you have questions regarding the research I mentioned and so I'm more than happy to, to do so. Um, so uh, Tina, I see that for now we don't have questions in the chat. If not, I can just expand a bit more on uh, the way we generally collaborate with institutions or professors or the way to start. Um, Professors individually can use the platform. And that's how we started. We started with a bottom-up approach. We wanted to make sure that the actual users, so the students and the professors, 
we're going to use the, the platform. So how the better way to do so is by developing with them. So we started with 40 professors, 2000 students to get the actual uh, feedback. Now, um, from there, an entire program, an entire department or institution can actually use it. Um, so this is the way we could actually start. So I see there is a question. Yes, Nina? Yes, Kevin, we have a question here in the chat and um, Jan is asking, uh, to what extent can the questionnaires be customized? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So uh, there are two sections. One is the automated feedback and the other is a custom survey. So um, questions are 100% uh, customizable. You have a survey section where the trainer can create uh, long and short answers, multiple choice, sliders, date selection, and so on, that they can submit to the students. What I presented is the automated way of asking for feedback. So basically it goes, did you went to class to a student? Did you went to class? How was it from terrible to great? What was positive, so some factors, and what was negative about it, and an open-ended comment. That is followed by three questions, the hypothetical projective question we saw before, which come from a database of our questions. So that is all automated. The professor, to understand how the course is going, simply click unlock or uh, can schedule it since the beginning of the course. In your service section, you can add uh, new questions uh, freely. So long story short, yes, uh, they are customizable. And thank you, Jan. So uh, you talk about uh, the reaction of professors. What about students? Uh, do they like it? So I can give words of the students because, of course, as a startup, if we don't talk with users, we don't survive. <laughs> So uh, what students said is, first, they like seeing their own results. So the fact that, OK, I click send, but then I can also see my situation, and especially the average of the class, because that gives them a perspective. Is it just me thinking a certain way? So maybe the course is repetitive. There are no new concepts that I'm, I'm not learning new concepts. Maybe it's just me, or is the entire class? So first part is the uh, seeing the results. Second is if feedback is too often or not too often. That really depends on the interaction that the professor has with it. So uh, if the professor asks for feedback and never say, oh, thank you, or I noticed this, for example, uh, we have some professor from University of um, Politecnico di Milano, which is the third semester. So he's been using it for one year and a half and keep asking for it because he used it in a very collaborative way. So it's meant to build collaboration, transparency, and, and more. So Kevin, we have more questions here. <laughs> Thank you also, um, Leona, for the question. I hope it's answered. Um, Leah asks, um, how much does it cost for individual professors? It's the first question, mm -hmm. and then there's also a second one. But maybe okay, so perfect. <laughs> so uh, the good news is for individual professors, it's free. You just send me a message on LinkedIn on um, or kevin.georges at wild.com. For professors, it's free. We just want them to enjoy and use it. There is no hidden data is yours. We're not going to share it. Uh, we want to provide value. We make our business in the corporate sites, not with single professors. Then it will be the program manager say, OK, I want cool platform. I would like to use it for all my professors, and I have some budget for it. Or is the department or the school saying, cool, I want to use it for all my programs, or is the university? So we don't charge your professors. It is B2B, business to business. Perfect. Um, the second question, Leah, is asking, um, what kind of data do you need from the students, like name, email, or is it all anonymous? So uh, as they have their own profile and application, they register. So uh, they put their uh, email, they receive an email confirmation, and they can uh, register. We thought of having the kind of Kahoot, Polyware type of that you just put a code, yet 
this platform is meant for continuous feedback. So it's, you should receive an email every time or the professor asking every time to put a new link. So it is an application for uh, centralizing both feedback and the survey and the questionnaires. So that is all. The professor don't see that. The professor don't see who wrote what. And that is repeated multiple times to the students as well. When they answer, keep calm, the feedback is anonymous. Or in the tutorial, feedback will, uh, you will, the professor will not see your name because it's very important that students feel comfortable in sharing anonymous feedback. Um, so yeah, is name and uh, email for personalizing their platform. And just to add to the previous questions, uh, it, it is free for professors and you can use it, doesn't matter whether the university adopted it or not. So uh, if you want to try it out, uh, you can just reach out to me with schedule and onboarding call. I show you more about the platform and how it works. Uh, I will give you the presentations and how you can introduce the platform to the students. So that's how we do it. For now it's very manual. We still have close interactions with our users. Perfect. Thank you very much, Kevin.